the Carol's family is stuck in a big, fat, Greek fest. <laughs> there you are. Whoa! So this, this is the living room. Okay. And when you first... Reality TV looks at life in the extreme. Hoarders and pack rats surrounded by out-of-control clutter, unable to let go. Now, we might not all be quite to those extremes. Maybe, maybe some of you are, I don't know. But all of us can relate to at least holding on to too much of something. And therapist Julie Hanks is back with us again. You say watching those shows makes us feel better. Because when we look at those, we say, okay, I might be a little pack rat. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. Yeah, so you go, okay, well, it's under control. But everybody has something that they're holding on to that maybe they don't need to. So how do you know what's normal and what is <laughs> too extreme? Because uh, <laughs> you never think you're too extreme. It's all on a continuum, really. You know, it's all on a continuum. So. Okay, we've all confessed, all three of us have confessed that we all have some tendencies. Selective to hang yeah. on to Pack things. rats. Mm -hmm. but, but then you said like everybody, so almost all viewers out there as well, unless That's you're like my wife, who she like, tries to purge me from being the pack rat. But what does she hold on to? There's something. You're gonna I think we I'm, all do it. I, I, I kind of do, but, but anyway. Are there reasons? Are there reasons why people develop these yeah. things where they have the house yeah. all full of stuff? Now this one is really surprising. Perfectionism. You would think that the perfectionists actually yeah. have to have everything yeah. clean and perfect. But that, so, are you a perfectionist, Terry? No, I'm not. Oh. I, I am. And but, I am okay. So <laughs> so, sometimes people hold on to things because they, they can't decide what to let go of and they don't want to make the wrong choice. So they, they just don't decide. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Well, some, sometimes I'm like that. I, mean, I want to start on the closet. I want to organize yeah, things. I'll but but it. I, can't, I can't figure <laughs> out. I don't know what. And then I, I can't do it right mm -hmm. the first time, and so I don't do it at all. Right. So that can be a form of perfectionism. If it's overwhelming when you look at everything that you need to purge. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I have to do it perfect. I want things to be just so. I don't want to make the uh, wrong choice. And you can't. You know you can't do it perfectly. So we just so put it, it off. Do it. Yeah. Okay, so if that's the problem, if perfectionism, if perfectionism is the yeah. reason why someone's a pack rat, how do they get over that? How okay. do they uh, overcome that problem? One tip is to decide on the spot the fate of something. When you pick it up, mm. <laughs> <laughs> decide trash or put it in its home. And an example of this, uh, this has been really good for me, actually. I didn't know I was so much of a pack rat. <laughs> but my kids bring home just, it feels like thousands of papers. Is this your kid's stuff here? Like we Every... oh, were looking at there, the binder stuff? Uh, yeah. So usually there's piles like of, you know, months worth of stuff. So I actually cleaned it off and started, oh, this is a great 100% trash and not just piling it all up for months. Mm. So this, I did that this week and it feels, it right feels really good. Right on the spot. Don't touch it and move piles of paper. That's, I do that. I'm so, so bad at that. So des decide on the spot. And the second one is to face your fears. Fear so often what? holding on to things, there's a, a fear. Yeah. And I was working with a client several years ago whose home was cluttered and it was so bad her kids didn't want to have friends over. It was, it was kind of extreme. And through therapy, I helped her realize she was holding on to things, to objects, because in her childhood she was deprived. She didn't have enough for her needs. And being surrounded by stuff made her feel like my family will always have enough. And so once she realized this isn't really about my stuff, this is about me as a little girl, she was able to start sorting through her stuff and let go of it. Okay, so a couple months ago, I was cleaning out a drawer that had a lot of papers in it, found a bunch of other things, including a pair of baby shoes from when I was little. Oh. And now they're just sitting out on my counter and they've been there because it's kind of sentimental. But what do yeah. I really do with them and what do I really need them for? <laughs> See, sentimentality, that is totally why I'm a pack rat. Yep, I have, I have articles of clothing that are literally 20 or more years old. But I remember when I got them. Oh, no. I know, but I can't get rid of it. So I'm like so sentimentally attached to these things. I think everybody probably okay, is. Okay, good, I'm I, not the only one. I, I think you're right. That is a, the second reason people hold on to things. It's like, oh, remember when, remember yeah. when, right? But uh, so I asked my Facebook friends, like, what are the things you tend to hold on to and have a hard time letting go? And, and 
one of the things was kid things that my kids made or children's things like that remind oh. me of another time yeah. right and so it's really important um, to avoid the clutter just keep one you don't have to keep boxes of baby clothes or boxes of artwork from every year of school keep one thing a year or keep one pair of shoes you don't have to keep the whole <laughs> wardrobe of your kids it doesn't it doesn't keep them young they still grow up you know even if you keep all of their <laughs> Their baby clothes or their or their projects. They're okay. still going to grow up. So that's up. one solution: mm -hmm. is just keep one. If you're attached yeah. to things sentimentally, any other ideas? Another is take a photo. Hmm. It takes so much less space, especially if it's digital. Yeah. And I've had this ongoing conversation with my mom, who collects vintage kitchen items, and it's a really cool collection. But she. She's trying to downsize, and there's all this fun stuff. It's really great, but it takes up a lot of space. So I said, Mom, um, why don't you just take pictures of it, sell it, and then make a really cool collage on your wall? And so that's actually something that she's going to work on. Really? Yeah. It definitely yeah. takes less space. It does. You and can remember it. all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the photos. <laughs> you can frame them on the wall. Okay, one last thing I can sometimes get into is frugality. Oh. Why give something away? It might be worth we, something, you know, I have to buy it again. Right. And you paid I for it. I yeah. Spent a lot of money. I spent so much on this. How can I let it yeah. go? But it's important to remember there's a cost to holding on to things emotionally and relationally, too, to having clutter and too much stuff. So, um, one thing to think about is if you haven't touched it in two years. Toss it. Do you have a lot of those things? <laughs> well, I have tons of those things. I I know. Know. Okay, I'm going to confess here. Uh oh, confession. One, one, my, one of my pack rat things are shoes. So there was shoes your, you don't wear? Well, I wear a lot of them, but not a lot. <laughs> Wait, are these your shoes? These, that's my shoe closet. Oh. Not even all of them. Okay, I know. I'm confessing. That's a nice shoe closet. The average woman has like 16, I think, 16 uh -huh. shoes. I have seven times that. And oh. I thought this is out of control, out of control. So I am committing to you and to viewers that I'm going to get rid of shoes that I haven't worn for two years. Okay? Because that, that's ridiculous. You said it Somebody here on the air. air. Someone's gonna but hold I, you to it. Now. I actually wore these shoes so I didn't have to give them away. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't worn these, but, but I'm going to hold on to these. <laughs> confession, confession. And uh, of course, if you like, we have more of Julie's tips on our website, and she, of course, has some great article on how if you are a pack rat, you like to hang on some of that stuff, you can read through it, or if you have a good friend who might benefit from that, you can print it off and give it to them as well. <laughs> you can find all the information at studio5.ksl.com. Thanks, Julie. I love Julie. the tips, yes. Thanks.